Hi, I'm Sherry Annick, Churchill Librarian. Today we are reading the story of Chopsticks. This is written by Ying Chang Combustine and it's illustrated by Yang Shen Huan. Um, if you have ever eaten chopsticks before, you might be wondering why we started eating with them. And this is going to be a pretty good story about why um, why we started eating with chopsticks. And I think it's a really fun story. Um, and I'm also curious who out there is good at eating with chopsticks. I like eating with chopsticks. I definitely would say I'm not a master like some people, but I do enjoy eating with them. Long ago, all Chinese people ate with their hands, including members of a family named Kong. The Kong family had three boys, Pan, Ting, and Kwai. All the boys loved to eat, especially the youngest, Kwai. Kwai yet Kwai never seemed to get enough food. He was always hungry. One afternoon, Mama Kang called out, it's time to get ready for dinner. Papa cut the chicken. Pan peel the sweet potatoes, Ting start the fire, and Kawaii get water from the well. Wonderful smells soon filled the house. Kawaii's tummy rumbled. If only I could eat my food right away, he thought. But if I pick it up too soon, it burns my fingers. And if I wait too long, my brothers get most of it and leave me nothing, he thought and thought. Time for dinner. Everybody wash, your, wash hands, shouted Mama. So I have a toddler right now, and she's not always so good at using a fork. Um, so a lot of times she grabs food with her finger, and it's she has a hard time eating it when we can use a, a fork. Um, and she, um, Because it doesn't burn our fingers, right? We use forks or we use a chopsticks if we're eating certain foods. Um, but my daughter hasn't figured that part out yet <laughs> so well. They all ran to the well. Papa, Pan brought the bucket. Ting lowered it. Papa hauled it up. Kawaii waited. I'm going to be first, he said. You don't have to rush, said Mama. The food is still too hot to eat. Kawaii said nothing, but his lips held a smile. As he washed, he splashed water all over. Kawaii, scolded Papa. Look at the mess you made. The bucket is nearly empty. Ting, help me refill it. While they got more water, Kawaii ran back to the house. I love these illustrations. Kwai plucked two long twigs from the kindling by the stove and speared a chicken leg with one stick and a big chunk of sweet potato with the other. Then he started to eat. The food was still hot, yet he didn't burn his fingers. Best of all, he didn't have to race his older brothers. For once, he was going to get enough to eat. When his family finally returned from the well, they were surprised. Tang understood immediately. He ran to the kindling and got himself two long twigs. Pan and Papa were right behind him. In a moment, they were climbing over each other, wrestling for twigs. Ayo! they cried. Kwai never stopped eating. After a while, things settled down. Everyone had a pair of twigs, even Mama. We should give these sticks a name, suggested Pan. Let's call them Gwai Z in, to honor Gwai, the quick one in our family, said Ting. Gwai smelled, smiled at his brother. This was the first time that a family in China ate dinner with sticks instead of their hands. A few days later, Mama came home very excited. Mr. Wong is holding a wedding for his daughter. It will be a big banquet. Everyone is invited. On the day of the wedding, Papa carried a bundle of red silk, a symbol of celebration. Mama carried a basket of fruit and nuts, a symbol of their wish that the new couple would soon have many children. Unknown to anyone else, the boys brought something too. What do you think they brought? When they arrived, Kawaii led his brothers to join the other children. Look at that food. I never saw a table as big as this one. Ting grinned. See the steam rising from that fish? It smells so good. It will be a long time before anyone could pick it up. Pan whispered to his brothers. See those girls rolling up their sleeves? They don't want their clothes to get dirty. The children stared at the food like starved wolves. Servants carried out more meat and vegetable dishes. Dumplings, egg rolls, rice cakes soon followed. All the children moved in closer, ready to strike. Have you ever felt like this before when you were super hungry, ready to strike on dinner? Kawhi looked at his brothers. Let's go! The Kong boys whipped out their sticks and attacked the butterfly chicken, wealthy peony beef, steamed buns, rice cakes, and especially the sweet eight treasures rice pudding. Mm, that rice pudding smells taste sounds good. The other children stared at them. Some tried to grab food for themselves. Ayo! They yelled. 
It's too hot. The smart ones ran off to find their own sticks. Before long, all the children were searching for sticks. Some even climbed trees to break off branches. So you can see them here doing that. What is all this noise? asked Mr. Wang. Soon all the grown-ups were gathered around the banquet table, even the bride and group. groom. Children held all kinds of sticks. Um, a tall boy held two branches. A toddler carried tiny twigs. Some children had their arms full. Papa opened his mouth to scold the boys. When he did, Kawaii put a big piece of meat in his mouth. Try the chicken, he cried. Now Papa was too busy chewing to yell at them. But Mama wasn't too busy. Boys, she cried. Boys! Pon put a big piece of rice cake in her mouth. Now Mama couldn't scold either. Are you going to try that with your parents if they yell at you put food in their mouth? I don't think that would work out so well. But it did here. Mr. Wang looked sternly at the running children. He glowered at Mama and Papa, who were chewing away. Ah, yo, he cried. A hush fell over the crowd. Mr. Wang turned red. He began to shake. He was laughing. Everyone else started to laugh, too. Mr. Lee, the village wise man, stepped forward. He looked very serious. After he raised his hand for attention, the crowd fell silent. Mr. Lee pointed at the children's sticks. Whose idea was this? He thundered. The Kang boys looked at one, one another. Pan stepped forward. It was my idea. Don't blame my brother. Then Ting bowed carefully to Mr. Lee. It was my idea. Please don't blame my brother. Papa walked over to Mr. Lee. It is my fault, Mr. Lee. We did not teach our children manners. Please. Mr. Lee gestured for silence. I must meet with village leaders tomorrow morning. Your whole family shall attend. No. Early the next morning, Mr. Lee met with the scholar, the doctor, the matchmaker, and the Kong family. He looked at the Kong boys. Tell me who had the idea for the sticks. Kwai timidly raised his hand. How did you come up with this idea? I didn't want to wait for the food to cool because I was always hungry. And I wanted to eat before my brothers because there was never enough food left for me. Mr. Lee frowned. Do these sticks have a name? We call them quasi quick ones, said Ting. Mr. Lee turned to the other elders. I would like your suggestions for the proper way to eat. The doctor said we should let our elders begin the meal. We should not serve food in serving bowls, said the matchmaker. The food should be cut into small pieces so that it's easy to eat, said the scholar. Then he added, what should we do about these, Kawaii? Mr. Lee smoothed his long white beard and took a sip of tea. None of these rules conflicts with using a Kwaizi to eat. After much thought, I say using, sorry, eating with Kwaizi is a good idea. I will write a report and send it to the emperor. Wow. The emperor also liked eating with Kwaizi. Before long, people were using them in every part of China. From there, Kwaizi spread to other countries, including America. There, they are called chopsticks, quick sticks. As for the Kong family, they opened up the very first chopstick factory. Their chopsticks, beautifully decorated with dragons, phoenixes, flowers, and lucky letters, became famous. Kwaii was the happiest boy in China. His food was never too cold, and he always got enough to eat. Sometimes even too much. So this was the story of chopsticks. I hope you'd enjoyed it. Thanks for listening, and keep on reading.